right. Have, amen. How are y'all doing? Good. Everybody uh, feeling comfortable? Yeah. Everybody uh, ready to get challenged? No. Come on. Well, if you don't want to be challenged, I'll just leave right now. Because no, I, cause I got some challenge tonight. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, oh, we're getting serious right now. Y'all better strap it in. Because here it comes. Ready or not. Pastor, Pastor John, he, I can't remember exactly when he talked to me, but he said, hey, would you consider coming up for this, an, this uh, anniversary celebration? I said, sure. You're my friend. Of course I will. And, um, and he told me, you know, it was the 20-year anniversary celebration thing, but I had forgotten about that, like that 20-year part. <clears throat> uh, but the word that I have is is uh, creating a 20-year vision. So I really feel like that's the Lord. <clears throat> now, isn't that kind of interesting that at your 20-year uh, celebration, the Lord's saying to you, I want you to plan for the next 20 years. Oh, come on. Come on. Okay, see, now then strap it in because it's coming. <laughs> So the, that's what the Lord gave me right away afterward. I was just praying, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? He said, talk about this. So, amen, hallelujah. Oh, well, the Lord's already here. How about that? Amen. So I want to, and I'm just going to, we're going to, this is our living room here tonight. So we're just going to talk as family. How about that? Does that sound okay? So I want to just tell you about something that my wife and I did. <clears throat> this was back in uh, December this last year, December 2018. And I had really been thinking about the importance of us, like just creating a long-term vision and, and really needing to like take time to get away with my wife and reflect on our, our life together. And we've been married, what, almost 32 years now? 32 years will be in January, right? 32 years in January, but I, I just felt like the Lord um, wanted us to create a, a long-term vision. Like, and, and I really felt like he was talking to us about creating a 20-year vision. 20-year vision. What do you all think about that? Does that sound scary? Yeah, in a way, yeah. in a way doesn't it? 20. <laughs> That's right. He's going to have to help me. Now, let me ask you a question before I dig all into this. How long do you suppose the Lord's vision is? He's got a lot longer vision than a 20-year vision, don't you think? How long is his vision? He's got a vision for eternity. When did he come up with that? Was it last week? Was it last, la last year? Before the foundation of the world, he had this in mind. Before the foundation of the world, he saw you. Now, that's interesting. And then he started to put things together to bring that to pass. That's Angel, right? Angel, he'd been thinking about you for eons in the past. And he decided, I'm going to bring together a plan to bring her forward in this generation. But then he didn't just stop with what's going to happen in this life. He had a plan of what he's going to do with you all into eternity. Let me ask you all another question. Um, so what do you suppose we're going to be doing in eternity? God, God already has a plan for that. Did you all know that? He's already got a plan for what he's do, going to do with us in eternity. It's in Ephesians chapter 2, verse, I think it's verse 8, and it says that, um, that he's going to be showing us his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus throughout all eternity. That's what he's going to be doing. You see, eternity is not long enough to, to have the fullness of the heart of God to be displayed. It's, it's, now that blows me away, but that's what the scripture says. 
It takes forever for the Lord's heart to be fully unveiled to you and I. And that's his plan. He wants to continue to reveal that to us. I'm, I'm, now, I'm just, paint, I'm just paving the foundation for where I'm going to take you. You see, God has a long-term vision. And I think you and I should too. God doesn't want us to just rumble through life. And everything has to be spontaneous, spont spontaneous, right? I used to think that that's the only way a charismatic or somebody who's really living in the spirit had to live. Well, everything had to be spontaneous, right? <laughs> Lord, everything had to be. No, not that. God ain't that way. He recorded from, from the beginning what he was going to do all the way through at least human existence. He recorded it from the very beginning. And he also unveiled his plan for us throughout all eternity from the beginning. It's amazing what God has done. So I, I don't understand sometimes how you get in certain evangelical circles and, and different places. But, you know, there's, like, there's almost like a, you know, if you think about long-term planning or planning anything, that's like, oh, wait, that, no, that can't be God. No, that is God. That is God. And I really feel like the challenge that God's wanted to put for you guys tonight is create long-term vision. What are you going to be doing? Now, if you don't create a vision or plan, then any road will get you to where you're going to go, right? I mean, if you don't know where you're going, then any road's going to get you there, right? You're just going to just meander about. But God has a desire for you to fulfill certain things in your life and to become certain things. For instance, um, you've gotten prophetic words. You've gotten declarations. You've received promises from God in the past, right? Where he's talked to you and he said to you, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Let me ask you a question. What plans have you put together to reach that which he's said to you? Have you created any plans? Don't feel bad, because sometimes that's why more most people are. They haven't been in that place. Now let me give you a scripture context for those of you who need a context. Um, look in Proverbs. It's Proverbs twenty twenty nine. Proverbs twenty nine and verse eighteen. And this is the new. English translation, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. I'm going to stop. That's the first part of that verse. In the New Living Translation, it says, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Ooh. Did that, did that hit anybody? Man, when I read that one, I, it got a hold of me. Without a vision, in the King James Version, it says, Without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision. And I think the importance of what God's wanting to emphasize to you, because obviously Abner touched on this, so this must be the Lord. He's saying to you, I want you to write down the vision and make it plain so you might run who are, re who are reading it that you might be able to accomplish what it is that God has called you to accomplish. Because the Lord has a purpose for you. Why does this church exist? Spend some time marinating on that one. Why does this place exist? So one of the things my wife and I decided to do was we needed to create a long-term vision. So what we did was we, we, um, we took uh, time and we got away from everything, got away from work, got away from our kids, got away from the pets, and rented a, I know, you gotta get away from the pets sometimes. And we, <laughs> and we rented a hotel room down in Myrtle Beach, because we both love the beach. God inspires us whenever we're at the beach. He just speaks to us somehow. And, and we decided we're just gonna spend four days just talking through things that we feel like God wants us to do and talking about vision and planning. 
And we were kind of looking at all different angles. We weren't just looking at like, well, what are we going to do in the church? Um, of course, spiritual life is important, but that's not everything that we did. But what we decided to do was we just tried to identify what are all the things that really matter in life to us. And we made a list of all those different categories. And we used a lot of different material that we saw. We did some research out on the uh, internet. There's a lot of interesting um, videos out there on YouTube about creating long-term vision and planning. There's articles out there. And as I was looking into it, I didn't really find anybody who I thought really did an excellent job with all of it, like putting together from A to Z what would this look like for a person who loves God and wants to run after God? I saw bits and pieces. I saw folks that would just focus on the spiritual aspect. And then I saw focus, focus on just natural aspect, but I didn't see a combination. So what I'm sharing with you, and maybe it does exist, I just haven't run across it yet. But what I'm, so what I'm sharing with you is trying to take all that together because God's interested in ministering to the whole person, Right? He's not just interested in making sure we have an interesting meeting. He's interested in every aspect of your life, right? Because that's who you are. I'm, I'm looking at people who have testimony. Every little aspect of who you are, there's a testimony about your life, right? And God is interested in redeeming and blessing every bit of it. Every last aspect of who you are, God wants to redeem and bless. Amen? Can I get an amen? Give me an amen on that one. Because that is true. Amen, David. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> that was my best Bill Johnson impression I can give you right there. I've seen so many videos of him doing it. I just went, oh, man, i got to do that one day. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> just has to, uh, I'm going to have to record a little amen. Just hit a little amen. <laughs> Get a little button thing going on. So we wrote down some categories, and I'll just share with you some of the things we wrote down. Um, but this isn't everything. I have it in another file. But we, you know, so we looked at our health. You know, we want God to redeem our health. We wanted God to redeem relationships. We want God to redeem, you know, our financial ca uh, capacity and wealth. We want God to redeem all of our experiences. We want God to redeem our family. We want God to redeem our occupation. We want God to, you know, have uh, 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 entrance into, you know, what we're going to do with our emotions. How about our moms and our dads, that are, you know, our, or at least our moms that are still living? What's, what's that going to supposed to look like? What's our interaction with that? So we came out with all these different categories. And then we, uh, we found an interesting survey online that went through like all these different categories and it had like 10 questions on each one. And it was kind of like ranking about where you are in your life as far as being satisfied with you know, what that looks like right now. And we, we went through and ranked it on a one to five. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what we did. And so, as we went down through each category, my wife and I, we had long conversations about each one of those areas, each one of those questions. And I'll be honest with you, some of those conversations were hard because we realized, you know what, here we are, we've been married 30 years, I think, well, we've been, well, it was 30 years at that point, almost 31. We've been married 30 years and we had some tears because we realize, well, we're thankful for some things, but in this area, we really feel like there's more that God wants for us here. And it was, it was difficult sometimes. Some of the conversations were difficult. But I'll say this, after we went through all those different categories, all those different questions, and it took us you know, four days to get through all this, that I feel like I had the richest conversation with my wife that I've ever had in our entire 30 years of marriage. Don't, don't you think? And we're still married. How about that? And we're still married. But we really took a look and we began to examine about what, does, what do we want life to look at. And then after we 
went through all these different things, and we found here's pieces, of what, well, okay, we really like what, what's happening here. Uh, you know, in this area, it's not really satisfying, fulfilling what we want. And then we took a spreadsheet, and we broke it, broke it down, our life, in all those different categories, and then we plotted it out. What does life look like at year one going forward into the future? And what does life look like in year three? And what does life look like in year five? And what does life look like in year 10, and in year 15, and in year 20? And we just kind of broke it down. In some of those categories, we said, here's where we'd like to be in 20 years. So then just kind of backing it up. OK, what, happen, what needs to happen at this mark, at this mark, at this mark, for us to be able to get to there? And, and in some other categories, we said, well, we know where we want to be in year one. We're not quite sure in year three, but let, let's go to year one. Okay, then let's multiply that out to year three, to five, whatever. And we, and we kind of plotted it out. And then we just took all of that before the Lord in prayer and just said, Lord, show us, help us to develop vision about what it is you want to do. Help us to begin to see and come into agreement with the destiny of which you have called us. There's a destiny and a plan on your life. Did you guys know that? I told you just a minute ago that he's got a plan for eternity for your life. Of course there's a destiny and a purpose for the next 20 years. Amen. So, amen, thank you. Amen. And so, so we began to just plot that out, and then we just took it before the Lord. And then the other thing that we did to add into the spiritual context is we went back and we began to review prophetic de declarations over our life. And we began to say, wait a minute, this ain't happening right now. What up? What about this word? I don't see it. And we begin to think about, well, wait a minute. What am I doing to line up and agree with what he's declared? Do I have any particular plans about that? All right, now let's just say like this, like, well, what if it's something that I just, in my present existence, I just don't even know how to get there. How about this? Well, did I create a plan to at least go talk to somebody who is there to begin to help me to begin to have vision for, okay, well, what does it look like for me to begin to living in that space? Did I have that conversation? I love y'all, but I really feel like the church, and I'm just, I'm not saying this about y'all. The body of Christ is lazy. The body of Christ is lazy when it comes to words from the Lord. And I'm not saying that about y'all. I'm just saying the body of Christ, it is. It's lazy. And quite honestly, I've been lazy about things. I think sometimes that we think that just because God said it, it's going to happen. And I'm not doing anything to come into agreement with it. What up? It's sad, but I know of pastors that I loved and that I learned under and that I was discipled under who passed away without fulfilling what it was that God said to them. I do not want to have that testimony. I do not want to have that testimony. I don't want to have words falling to the ground because I was lazy and did nothing to come into alignment and agreement with what God has to say. Amen? Whew. I know it's getting a little warm, but that's okay. Um, so... I have, with that in mind, I have some thoughts I want to just give you. So creating a vision, it helps you to define the future. When you have a vision about what it is, that where you're supposed to go and what's supposed to happen in your life, it eliminates the feeling of hopelessness. Because hopelessness is looking into the future and not realizing or thinking of where I'm going. But having a vision helps define 
what life is supposed to be like and look like. And there's a, there is a destiny for which you are heading. Amen? That is an amen. So we, so we need to have vision. And that's what Proverbs 29 was talking about. If you don't have a vision, you cast off discipline, you cast off restraint, and you're running and living life like you're a wild pony in the desert with no direction. God wants you to have a direction. God wants to take you somewhere. Amen? Amen. Having a vision helps you change your life. When you have a life vision, it helps you define what your life is going to be all about. And then it helps you identify short and long-term goals on the way to fulfilling your life vision. So here's my question to you. What do you want, li want life to be like? What, do you, what life do you want to live? What kinds of people do you want to be surrounded by? Think about that. All right. So let me give you some other platitudes, some thoughts here as we think about vision and life and all this. Planning, if you're planning, planning is faith. The scripture says that the just shall live by faith. Planning is faith, and faith is planning. If you really believe what the Lord has said to you, then you will create a plan to come into agreement with it. If you don't, you won't. If you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. That's a pretty scary one, don't you think? If you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. What is faith? Faith is conviction about what you believe the future is supposed to be. Right? Faith is conviction about the future. Faith demands that you have a plan. If you have faith and you really believe something, then it demands that you create a plan to get there. Right? Now, this one should hit you right between the eyes. God has a plan for you, but he doesn't plan for you. He's got a plan for you, but he doesn't plan for you. Let me say that again. Make sure you get it. God has a plan for you, but he doesn't plan for you. In other words, you have a free will, and you've got to make a determination. That's right. He doesn't force you to follow it. He's got a plan, but he's not going to plan for you. Now, he will direct your steps. And by the way, uh, there's nothing more miserable than a Christian who's not coming into agreement with God. That's a miserable person. They just go through trial after trial after trial, and God is like trying to, like, using the bit and the bridle to pull them in into agreement with him but at some point the Lord just says well okay have it your way so God has a plan for you but it doesn't plan for you if God tells you to do something and you don't document it and plan to do it then you don't believe it ooh if you believe something then you'll plan for it Right? Yep. If you believe it, then you'll plan for it. You'll begin to do something about it. Planning is the act of capturing God's will for your life. Planning gives definition to faith, and planning documents vision. Planning documents vision. Now, let me say this. Paul, and how this works together. Paul knew that he was called to the Gentiles, right? He had... A desire. I want to walk and run after, Lord, that which you have created me and set me aside as an apostle for. And he knew he was supposed to go to the Gentiles. So he created a plan and a vision. Okay, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here. 
Now, this is how God works with us. So he wanted to go into Asia, and I forget the name of the city. You guys probably remember. Um, but he wanted to go into Asia, and the Lord gave him a dream one night and said, Paul, hey, I am so impressed with the fact that you want to create plans and you want to go after things and stuff like that, but that isn't the place where I want you to go right now. And he said, nope, don't go there. And then he gave him a dream one night, and he saw a man from Macedonia that says, come over here. So in the middle of Paul having a plan to go after the fact that he knew that he was supposed to be ministering to the Gentiles, the Lord directed his steps. And so God was working with Paul. And think about it this way. God did not rebuke Paul for having a plan to go to minister to the Gentiles. Actually, he was in agreement with that. Paul, I'm so happy that you're allowing your heart to be stirred up and you're creating vision and you want to go after it. But let me just redirect you a little bit and get you in the right spot. And that's how I feel like God works with us. He wants us to be involved in creating plans and going after what he said and what he spoke. But if you happen to get to the place where, okay, you're really operating in a way I don't want you to go, he'll redirect you. He'll, 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 he'll help you begin to get in the right place. And I heard a, um, a message one time that said, you know, if you're wanting to steer a car, the best way to steer a car is if it's moving. Because when it's stopped, it's difficult to turn the wheel. <laughs> There's a lot of stopped wheels in the body of Christ. And the Lord says, I need you to get moving. Okay? Because I've got things for you to do. Okay. Without a plan, life has no vision. And without a vision, there's no self-control. Isn't that true? Come on. Here's another one to think about. A planner will always be promoted because a planner is a visionary. Visionaries see the future, and those who are in charge are interested in employing those who know where they are going. Think about that one. Wow. Come on. So I really feel like God wants you to begin to think about long-term vision. That's what I feel like the Lord's word is for you tonight. That's what I, uh, that's what I came with. Amen. That, that he's, he's calling you to another 20 years. Now that's pretty cool, don't you think? He's saying, come on, this place is going to be existing another 20 years. But I want you to think about this. What's it supposed to look like? I don't know. But, the, but Papa knows. Right? And I just feel like, um, you know, John, especially uh, for you and as in your leadership team, I think it would be really good to get together in a staff, as a staff and just sit down and talk about this. Like, what's this supposed to look like in 20 years? What's this, what are we supposed to be doing? Doing? What's the expression of Christ that he's called us to? And go back and review the words over this house. What are these words that are over this house? Think about that. And then begin to think it and look at like, okay, well, what can we do to come in alignment with that? And then there's going to be some of those words, and you, you know because you've been around, some of those words you get, you're still like, man, I just don't even know what to do with this. I just don't even know what to do. And I feel like those are great words to go and find somebody who is doing what it is that you were called to do and figure out how they got there. Right. Have a conversation. Go have a cup of coffee with them. Um, ask them to lay hands on you, to impart to you. Like, hey, would you just, you know, you've been called to be this, like, financial whatever person. And I know we've been called there, but I don't know how to get there. Will you just lay hands on me and pray for me? Um, will you do some impartation? Because sometimes maybe that's what you need. You just need a little bit of impartation to spark, you know, to spark life into you and begin to help you move forward. I remember hearing so many different words, like from, from Bill Johnson, and where he, he and his team, they were like, they knew that God had called them to be a place where they'd be operating in healing and power like that, but they just weren't there yet. And so what, one of the things that they would do is they would go to meetings all over the place to find out, okay, well, who is there? All right, well, let's get them to pray for us. Okay, all right, so, okay, at least they're there. So let's watch their videos. And let's begin to, like, practice what it is that they did on the video. And let's do that. And, and they, so they were doing things to activate their faith. And by the way, 
What does that look like when you're in the infancy of trying to go after something that you know that God's called you to, but you're just not there yet? It looks sloppy. It looks stupid. It looks, <laughs> doesn't it? You feel like, man, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. But you know what? God honors faith. So when you begin to like step out in faith and say, Lord, I know this looks silly, but I am so zealous to go after what you have said about me that I'm gonna, I don't care if I look like a fool. I'm going to go after what God has said. Right? And so then you step out into the, the waters with trepidation, not knowing if God is going to catch you or not. But God honors faith. And he will meet with you there. And he'll say, you know what? I like that spunky guy. I like that spunky church. I like that spunky woman who's going after it. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to bless them just because they tried. Oh, that's such, that's the thing. So many aren't trying. Don't let that be your testimony. This weekend, the Lord reminded me of a, of a word. I've gotten this word several times. I don't know how I'm going to get to it. But I know I've got to have some more conversations. I've got, I, I just got to get out on the floor and just blubber before the Lord. And just say, Lord, okay, I don't even know how to go there. I've gotten that word so many times. But God, you've got to show me something. And I, I'm going to talk to my wife about it on our way back home. And we're going to talk about, okay, we got this word. This woman come up to me. I went, we're up in Stanton, Virginia, this, this weekend. And at the very end, after Paul and I and Michelle and Paige, we were just pouring out, ministering to people, whatever. This woman come up to me um, afterward, and she starts giving me a word. And she just started talking to me. And this word she gave was this word that I've been getting over and over and over about some finance issues. And, and I, was like, I was just blown away. I was blown away. It was gone. And um, so anyway, I'm just saying, like, you've got words like that, I'm sure. Amen. That's like, yeah, I don't even know what to do with. Blubber for the Lord. And then go figure out somebody who's doing what that is that you've been called to do. Go talk to them or go to their seminar or watch something on the video on the YouTube or something. Do something more than nothing. <laughs> right? Do something more than nothing. <laughs> Something's better than nothing, right? That's faith in action, right? Or at least it's the beginnings of it. And then when you, when you step into it, and then you're the moving car, and then God can begin to direct you, right? But if you just stay put and stay in one place, oh, please don't do that. Please don't do that. So I just feel like that's the word that the Lord wants you to to begin to put some planning to your faith. Begin to think about, okay, what can I do to come into agreement with alignment with it? Here's where it's gonna probably look like, okay? So let's just say you haven't done anything like that. At least do this. Get out words and promises that you know that God has given you over the years. At least get that out and listen to them. Because what'll happen is, it'll begin to stir up in your heart and begin to give you vision about, okay, well, okay, what's, okay, what's supposed to happen here? What do I need to think? At least it'll begin to stir that up. And here's, here's another thing that Michelle and I, we found out as we did this. The Lord began working with us. What I find is amazing, as we started to map this stuff out, we started seeing things happen. I mean, it was not, it was not two weeks, and things began lining up with the plan that we were taking before the Lord and praying and saying, God, show us. It was not two weeks and things began to happen. And here we are now, we're uh, eight months into this process, nine months into this process, and we're still things, seeing things line up because we created a 20-year vision about this. And I know there's more. And I know there's more. Look, if he, if he began working with us and coming into alignment with just nine months of the 20-year plan, what's that mean about the next 20 years? Come on. Look, God has something good for you. But he needs you to come into agreement with him. Right? 
That, that, that's what it's all about. You've got to come into agreement. You're not in agreement if you're doing nothing with it. You're in unbelief. Come out of unbelief. I love what Mike Bickle says. He says, you know, man, at least give the year, the Lord 10 years of your life and just run after him with all your heart. You know, go after whatever it is that he said. To you. Go after it. With ten, you know, dedicate 10 years. And then when you get to the 10-year mark, then go back and reflect on, okay, well, what has God done with me after these 10 years where I just really dedicated myself to him? And you'll find out, wow, look at what the Lord has done. Look at, look, look at what he has done. Yes. So I just, I feel like, I feel like, and, and, and by the way, um, some of you might be feeling like, wow, David is really rebuking us. I, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, it's not, it's not rebuke. It's a, it's a call up higher. It's a call up higher because there's more for this body. Amen. Martinsville needs an expression of the power and the glory of Jesus yeah. here in this city. Don't you think? They need it. Amen. Martinsville needs Angel to take on the glory and the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's a lot of um, entrepreneurs and stuff like that are talking about long-term vision and stuff like that. Some of that stuff's pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, but, you know, some of you got to filter out because, you know. But what, one of the things that I find interesting as you're thinking about, like, this longer-term vision thing, <laughs> normally what will happen is you'll cram so much into year one, it's like, man, I don't know if I can get that all done. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing that you'll find out is I can get a whole lot more in in 20 years or in two years, you know. So you'll kind of overestimate for the first year, but you'll underestimate for the other years. There's really more that you can do than what you are challenging yourself to do. Isn't that true? I, 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 want, you, I want everyone, let's all stand up for a minute. Because I just want you to put out your hands. I just feel like a, a corporate impartation for a vision and anointing Amen. for future and defining those things. So, Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name that you would cause an impartation of, of vision and future right now in Jesus' name in every one of them. Lord, I ask you to make the vision plain, that you would make it plain in Jesus' name, and that you would work in their heart, Lord God, to help them to begin to define what's that supposed to look like, what's that supposed to feel like, what am I supposed to be doing, what are you going to be doing in my family, God? What are you going to be doing in my emotions, God? What are you going to be doing in, in my business, God? What are you going to be doing with my health, God? What are you going to be doing in my spiritual life, God? What are you going to be doing in every aspect of my, my being and who I am? Lord, I ask you right now to give them vision and understanding, impartation of life in the name of Jesus, that they might see and hear and feel and know and taste and see what it is that you want to do, God. And, Lord, I ask you that as, we, as they begin to move and as they begin to drive, as they begin to get out of being stagnant, Father, that you would cause them to see and have direction for what they're to do in the name of Jesus. Cause direction to come just like you gave it to Paul, God. Just like you came in a dream, in a vision of the night, and you showed them where to go and what to do. Lord, I ask you to release dreams now in Jesus' name. Release vision now in Jesus' name. Release fire in Jesus' name. Release details in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to put cause uh, resources to be released in the name of Jesus for what you want to accomplish in this place. Lord, I ask you that you put relationships together in the name of Jesus. Lord, the things that have been stagnant, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I command life to come right now. Father, I ask you to release it. Release it in Jesus' name. Pour down fire from heaven. Father, I ask you to consume the sacrifice that they give as they press into you. Consume the sacrifice. Let your light come down. Let glory come in this, in this place. Father, I ask you to make a shift in the name of Jesus because we need you. We need more of you. In Jesus' name. More, more Holy Spirit. 
More Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and shake and move. Come convict, Lord, where we need conviction. Father, we know that we know you're not mad at us. God, we just ask you to help us to get out of stagnancy and get into the place of moving with you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. Ooh. Come on. Come, Jesus. Come on. Come, Jesus. More, Lord. We ask you for more. We ask you for more. Lord, please, will you please give dreams and visions, God. Will you please come and plead with your people, Lord. Please come and plead with them and speak to them and, and, and awaken the heart. Awaken the soul, God. Lord, put us in the right place. Help us, God. Forgive us. Forgive us where we've been lazy, Lord. Lord, and I pray that as you move with us, let us be a, let us be a representation of what you want to do. Father, that you might inspire this generation, that you might inspire this city, that you might inspire this region. Lord, begin with us. Don't, don't, don't let us get away, but begin with us, God. Please, please come and help in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You don't need another word. You need to take the word that you have and run with it. That's the word. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Woo. Okay. I'm done. Wow. So today, you have an opportunity when you leave this place. It's an opportunity for the next 20 years. And um, when David started speaking, I thought, Lord, wow. He, he showed me something each of us, myself included, we need to do as we leave in our cars tonight and start down this mountain. There's lots of time. And we need to start declaring and speaking those things about the opportunity that lays ahead of you. And you have lots of time to do it because you can't get down there very fast. <laughs> so start declaring and speaking those things into existence. It's, it's just amazing. I mean, I wish that we would have done this 30 years ago. But, you know, God's not done with us yet either. And, um, man, he can redeem the time. And the other thing, yeah, amen, amen. And the other thing I just wanted to say with that, too, is that we have, we've printed those out. Because, you know, you got to be able to run and see the, the plan, the vision. So every day... When I get up in the morning and I'm brushing my teeth, I am smack dab looking at those. I taped them on my mirror and he has them by his. I mean, so make sure you know it. Because eventually you look at it, you look at it, you look at it. And then you don't need to look at it because it's already in here. So I want to encourage you to do that. So thank you, Lord. Ooh. This is this is a this is a kind of a fun fact, as we were kind of studying and looking into this stuff, that just the act of beginning to plan for the future, you will begin to line up an agreement with it, and um, they've done these studies where people like they would make a plan, and they would just make just plan out for a year, and what they found was just the act of you writing it out and making a plan. 90% of what it is you made a plan for. Even though you don't look at it again, you'll fulfill. Why is that? It's, it's, you're pro that's right. You're programming in your mind and your spirit. And you, and you have like, okay, you're coming into agreement with it. Just because, you, just because you took the time of writing it out and beginning to plan it. Now then think about like what if you're faithful to kind of re, you know, review that and go back to it and Think about it. That's one of the next steps that my wife and I need to do. We need to go back, review. Okay, here's what we, eight months ago, this is what the Lord said to us. But let's, let's just, now we, now we have more fulfillment of ex experience and 
more understanding and God's worked in our character a little bit more, let's go back and revisit and look at that. And then let's just say, okay, do we need to make some tweaks or anything like that to come into agreement? Because we think that, that there may be some additional things that God is saying that we didn't understand a year ago when we began to do this, right? But just the act of beginning to do that, 90% of that you'll fulfill. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. So anyway, amen. 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 The book of Habakkuk, and I just feel like the Lord wants me to tie this in. He said, get up unto your watchtower. As I will get up, and, and I'm not quoting it exactly, to hear what the Lord would have for me. That is the intercessor prophetic calling to pray. But then he said, after you get up there and you hear what I want you to hear, then it says, write the vision. But he says, I will get up on my watchtower. So in order for God, I just want to say it's, it comes with the territory of who you are as a prophetic intercessor person who feels the burden to get up and pray and seek the Lord and get in a place, an elevated place to pray, an elevated place to seek the Lord. But then you have to follow through and write it. Jubilee, this is the year of Jubilee. Lame now walk, blind now see, this is the year of Jubilee.